Well, Rocket, what do you think? He's like, I'm ready to fetch. That's what I think. <laughs> so, I bet a lot of you are wondering, now what in the heck is a Case IH doing on the Kister farm? Well, we are going to be using this as a demonstration unit um, for a wheelman video. So in our next video, I am going to install the wheelman in the Magnum and we are going to use it uh, depending on what the weather's like and if we can find anything else to use it for, probably on the Rhino Ag 4155, take it out to the pasture, mow some brush with it. Um, I'd like to use it for more and it's just the timing this year with everything. I mean, I wish I could have gotten it during hay season even, but um, we don't have anything to cut right now, so. Boy, sure is a pretty tractor. It sits fairly high. This Case IH Magnum 210 is from St. Joseph. I believe they're up around Madison. And um, we've got it here over the weekend. So tomorrow I'm going to install the wheelman in it, take it out, use it a little bit. And then um, after I use it, I'm gonna do a review video on it, seeing what I think about it. Because to date, I have yet to drive a Case and I'm really looking forward to it. So this tractor is 210 engine horsepower as shown by the hood. According to tractor data, this tractor has 180 horsepower on the PTO, which is their claimed uh, horsepower. On the drawbar, it's tested at 155 horsepower and then the tested PTO horsepower was 203. This unit was produced in Racine, Wisconsin, which is actually not that far from us. Uh, it's about a two to three hour drive from here. And the fuel tank's capacity is 118 gallons. The rear lift is 12,000 pounds uh, with an optional package of up to almost 16,000 pounds. It's got an independent rear PTO with a 540 and 1,000. This tractor has four SCVs and its total flow is 39.6 gallons per minute. The engine is an FPT 6.7 liter six cylinder diesel. This unit is full power shift with 18 forward and six reverse gears. Its maximum drawbar fuel use is 11.8 gallons per hour. This unit has def. Let's take a gander on the inside here. So looking at the steering wheel here, looks like we got our horn, turn signals, uh, left hand reverse, just a little yellow button on the top. Uh, oh, there we go. So, that is neutral. Okay. Here we have our warning lights and lights. Let's go ahead and turn the key on. We've got a corner post display with our engine temperature. We've got a very working AC system. Here is the corner post display. It's got all, all of our information on it. Looks like engine oil pressure, engine hours, battery voltage, as well as our transmission information, our speed. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Very nice, smooth starting tractor. Let's go ahead and close the door. Okay, so that speeds up the engine. We've got a button on the back there. Not totally sure what that does. I'm gonna go ahead and press it and see what happens. Nothing, that's good. Okay. Now, I wasn't giving it, given any instructions on how to drive one of these things, so I'm just kind of playing it by ear. Down here on the armrest, we've got our differential, auto, auto differential, four-wheel drive, um, trailering buttons. I'm sure someone in the comments knows what these do. Um, we've got raise and lower for the three-point arm. Yes, sir. I'm going to try to see if I can get this thing moving. So that's how you put it into the park right there. You shove the transmission left-hand reverser 
back, and then to the right. So, looking at the buttons, it says, uh oh, uh oh, oh my gosh, okay, well, was not expecting that. <laughs> I thought I would have to do something over here. But apparently, that's just how you speed up the engine. Take it out of gear for a second. Oh! <laughs> How do I stop this thing? There we go. Okay. Whew. Okay. That was scary. Have a look at the spec sheet. So, according to the spec sheet, this has 337 hours with a deluxe cab performance instrument cluster. Factory guidance ready, power shift, four electric remotes, cab suspension, ooh, fancy. And obviously the rear duals. So the price on it is $117,985. Um, not totally sure what year it is. Rocket's already wondering why he's not up in here with me. Sorry, Rocket, not today. All right. So, so far, I mean, I do like it. It's very spacious in the cab here. Looking back here, it looks like we have a button for the auto steering. Uh, since it is a guidance ready tractor, we've got a rotary beacon, uh, AC and heat controls, windshield wipers, rear windshield. Um, not totally sure what that is. And then maybe that locks the hydraulics or the lift arms. Not totally sure. All right, how do I extend the steering wheel? Extend. Oh, Patronum. Come on. Oh, there we go. I'm clueless here. Clueless. Okay. Using the hand control, I can select what gear I'm in. Right now we're in 12. We're going three and a half miles an hour. getting used to. When all else fails, just push in the clutch. We're going to go for a little bit of a spin. Woo! Lots of torque. Let's take it down the field road. So here are the controls for the SCVs. We've got one through four. We've got our PTO right here and other than that I mean it's pretty much it for the tractor there's a lot of other things uh, to take note of like the side window washers over here we've got the nozzle for the windshield washer fluid as well as the wiper there that's pretty cool the other side doesn't look like it's got one and then the same thing on the fenders back there. You got the, the nozzles for the windshield washer fluid. I'm gonna go fast. <laughs> it does have a very smooth ride. Overall, I mean, it seems like a pretty nice tractor. out for a stroll. I'm out on the field road here and you can see that there's a lot of moisture on the tires. We got a bit of rain last night. Let's try to engage the PTO. Uh, it's not turning on. Oh. There we go. So, to engage the PTO, you gotta pull it out and push it forward. 
and then just tapping that back stops it. Got foot pedal, brakes are locked together. This is for the steering wheel. And then we got a clutch over here. Side compartments, buddy seat. Does it fold up? Doesn't seem like it. Those are a very nice feature to have for when you're working either early in the morning or late in the day. Not totally sure what this is for. Looks like it's roof access for something. Sounds like a Japanese horn from the 60s. <laughs> so, unfortunately, that's all I'm really gonna run through today. I don't know a whole lot about this tractor, um, but I'm gonna go park it out by the road so people who drive by can get an early look at the video. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Okay. I like how their doors, the uh, the bars go all the way around up here. So if the door is open, you can just pull on this. Um, with the 82, you have to reach out and grab it in. All right, time to head back to the farm. I want to see what this thing's top speed is so we're going to take it out on the road and do a loop so i can go down the highway make a left and basically just do a big circle out in front of the farm and we're going to see what this thing maxes out at right now i'm in 15. my hazard's on the 76 tops out at 25 so if you hold the downshift button it just keeps cycling down through the gears until you're going at a crawl and I imagine the same as with shifting up through them you just hold the rabbit on the hand control and it shifts through the gears for you I do not see any kind of indication for depth, uh, what our level is, you know, is it getting low or anything like that. Uh, there's a bunch of lights up here that it could be. It might start flashing once it gets low, uh, but that'd be something that you want to refer back to the owner's manual for. Looks like this unit has been out on rent for a while because it's got 423 engine hours on it and the spec sheet says it's got 337 so it's got just under 100 more hours on it than what the spec sheet claims. So that noise would be the parking brake engaging. Okay, I was wondering what that noise was coming from under the seat. Overall, it doesn't really seem like that bad of a tractor. Um, I don't really know if I'm gonna have enough experience with it over the next few days with it just to have a real valid opinion on the tractor itself, but so far it seems all right. Uh, I can't really think of anything negative that I've noticed about it. Um, one thing I don't like, I guess you could say, it would be the forward and reverse, left-hand reverser. I don't like how it's up on top. Um, I mean, I guess it does make it easier for doing it with your right hand if you're looking out to the left. Um, like if you're unloading silage or something like that and you need to move back and forth, that would be pretty handy, I guess, because then you could have it quick, quickly accessible. But I guess even if you were steering with your right hand, I still think that if you were sitting off to the side, you'd still be able to have your hand down like this. And overall, it just feels more comfortable there. Um, where it's at now, I mean, it just kind of feels like it's 
up on top. I mean, I'm not used to moving the left hand reverse or left or right for forward and reverse, but um, it's not really a big gripe at all. So uh, what I do like about this tractor so far is the amount of space in the cab. I like how much space there is back here. Um, just a lot of room for rocket <laughs> as well. So in our next video, I am going to be hooking this up to the Rhino Ag 4155. I'm going to be installing the Wheelman Flex on this tractor, and we're gonna go mow some more pasture because there is a lot of brush out there that needs to be mowed down. That's it for now. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And with that, I think it's Dad's turn to take it for a spin. <laughs> this is your parking. That button is neutral. It is? Yep, so all you gotta do is push it forward. And you're still in neutral. And you gotta select forward or reverse. So now remove the clutch. Feels like some of them, like some things on it are really nice, but then other things are built cheap, like the lights down here. Like that just feels kind of like cheap to me, that switch, you know? It's got a 540 PTO, that's nice. Yep. First impression? Not crazy about how the wheels are losing their pain already for a tractor that's got 400 hours on it.